This video is going to be on different ways of setting a mill vise. It's not really tramming, it's putting it in with a jig, but it's, it avoids having to tram the mill vise every time you put it in there, and it's fairly accurate. It's not perfect, but it's fairly accurate, and it's perfect, perfect for me because I just make models, and most of the parts I made are very small. So if the, the mill vise is a tiny bit out, it's, it doesn't make any difference. It can be out a half or a, a thousandth. The first thing I'll show you is how I did it before. What I did was I put two blocks in here that just fit in that slot, nice and solid. Then I had a bar, which I have lost in the meantime, that fit right into here, absolutely perfect. I think I milled it and I had it marked so I could save it. What I did is I put the vise down there and clamped the vise up on it. And once the vise is clamped on that bar, I milled the two sides of the blocks so they would just fit in that slot. And that's pretty accurate. It's, you know, within one or two. Okay, but uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Bob Jones, who's one of my subscribers, sent me a picture of his vise because I had complained about having to tram the vise. And he said, this is a jig that he made and uh, I really liked it. He's from uh, Billingham, Washington. Anyway, uh, I looked at it and I immediately went out to my shop and started looking for parts that I could make it out of. And this is what it is. This isn't exactly like his. His was longer, but all I had was this bar, which is a foot long. And that's plenty long because the further you spread this out, the better. The, what would I say? It's a, uh, if a, if a mistake, it's, it's less of a mistake. The farther you go out, the less the mistake will, will show up. And in four inches in the vise, it won't show up at all, probably. But let me show you how this works. So what I've done is I've taken a 3 8 mill and I've run down the back side of this and taken off two, two passes of five thousandths. And this isn't hardened, so I can do that. I used a carbide mill anyway, but uh, it's nice and smooth back there and it should be perfectly aligned with the table. So now if I put this on there, which has two teeth sticking down on it and line that up like this, I can move that to anywhere that that's machined. It's machined within two inches of each end. So if I put this on there and bolt it on, Take a second here. I, I hold that in here tight, snug it, snug that side, and then tighten it. Okay, that should be absolutely parallel with the vise, I mean with the, the table, because I milled this. But I'm going to mill this again because I had my uh, Gibbs a little loose. When I did it the first time and that's what you should do first you should make sure your gibs are tight so I'll do that just going to make one pass here of about five thousandths and see how that works out okay so as you can see if I make a pass here now on that and take off five thousandths this will be absolutely parallel I gotta come in and just hit that at the end. I got the gibbs pretty tight right now. So what I'm going to do is take a small bite off of that and bring it into the touches. Okay. And then I'm going to bring it in five thousandths. down make sure it hits all the way okay, so now I'm going to take this off here I've already done this side and that side should be perfect so I'm going to just take it off and vacuum it up nice and clean
Okay, now we're going to put the vise back on there. Now you got to wipe off the bottom of the vise too. We'll do that over here. Okay. These so pretty well adjusted so that I only have to tighten them up a little bit. Okay, so that's hand snug hand snug and I put this on again pull these nuts into place both sides okay So holding that against there and snugging it, holding that against here and snugging it, and then I'm going to tighten them both. So if I clamp this vise now, it should be dead true with the table. Now I can tighten the vise down. Okay, now we'll just take the take this off and we'll see how accurate it is. Now one of the problems that I have is I don't have anything that's very straight. I looked around my shop and I'm, I'm pretty sure that these are ground parallel in both directions. So if I put this in there, that should be pretty straight. And I checked it on the, the surface plate, and I can't seem to get a 1,000 feeler gauge underneath it, so it's pretty close. Let's see what it does. But nothing I have is new, so... Now you can see that's not moving much at all. It's moved about a half of a thousandth or less. And that's the gib. See that? That's the amount of play there is in the gib. So that's pretty good. I don't think that's uh, moved at all. It's at one and a half thousand. So I'll go back the other way. So it's just let's set that on zero and go back the other way I took the, the play out you can see that vice is pretty tram pretty good that's better than I can do it with tramming it now it's off about a half a thou Right at the end here, goes off about a half a thou. But uh, that, that's pretty good, and, and this could be out a half. I don't know, this this thing is, is ancient. I've had it around my shop for, for 15 years or more, and it's had a hard life. So it might not be perfectly straight. Now that you've seen it in action, I'll show you how I made it. It's, it's not much of a process. Uh, I, have, I probably should take the vise out. No, I guess I can leave the vise in. I just got to take the uh, dial indicator out of there. The first thing is to make these side pieces. And as you can see, that's all. I just sawed that out of quarter inch steel. And you could make them out of anything. I think eighth inch would be too thin. But uh, quarter inch worked out really good for me. And uh, I silver braze these on there. These could be bolted on. You could just put a little piece of angle iron there. That doesn't have to be accurate at all. And it could be adjustable too. Where, where I put my adjustment was up here. But you can also put the adjustment in this. Because when you put it in here, I'll show you. When you put a round bar in there and you mill some off of it, the vise has to move back. 
Well, you still have to be able to tighten these bolts. So it can't move back further than the uh, range that that has. So you have to be careful when you make the thing that you take that into consideration that you're gonna mill probably 50 or 60 thousandths off of here. So what I did is I, I put something down here to give me a little vertical uh, adjustment. And then I laid the, put a bar in there like that. Let it protrude out of this end. And I have faced off this end. And then I took a little piece of cardboard and I put it on there and drew that. As you can see, this one is a little higher, but uh, that's actually because you got to cut a quarter inch off the bottom at least. You want that tooth to go down in there enough to hit the uh, back side of this uh, slot. So that's really shaped. You saw the original shaped like this. And that gets cut out and that tooth fits down into here and that goes up against there and then I just drew a circle around that and I kept cutting the cardboard till I got it to about what I wanted and then I made it out of steel and I put a hole in here with a slot but if you make if you put a piece of angle iron down here thusly it sticks out with a slot in it so you can adjust that back and forth a little bit when you first put it in there. You would put it in there, put that in the slot, and then you'd adjust that angle iron piece back so you can clamp it down and you can still tighten the bolts here. I think, I hope you can understand what I mean because the vise has a, a limit to what it can do. It can only go back and forth maybe an eighth of an inch either way. And when you mill off the back of this, it has to come back. So this has to be adjustable to do that. Okay. Now I've milled both sides with the thing bolted down and I've taken the bolts out. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this against the, the finished side of that slot and try to hold it flat if I can. As you can see, I can slide that thing along at the very end it doesn't move. pretty accurate okay it looks pretty good now you'll notice if you reverse direction it moves about a thousandth and I think that is is this this will actually move a thousandth of an inch if you do it and that and I believe that's the Gibbs it's either the upper Gibbs or the lower Gibbs I'm not sure which because there's a set of Gibbs down here that affects it too and I haven't tightened those yet but let's just see how it, it'll go along. I won't turn it because that'll throw it off. Turn this on, bring it this way. used here is 3 8 bolts and they're fine thread so I can get them good and tight and I made a special washer for it so this is pretty solid it's not gonna it's not gonna move I tightened them up as tight as I did without stripping them and uh, this stays in stays pretty good and because this is quarter inch steel and as you can see that's fine there nice fine finish on the back side front side doesn't matter because that's just loose but when I put that in there you 
can see, there's no, there's absolutely no play this way because it's up against that jaw. There's plenty of play this way because of that. So that's it. Uh, if you want a, something so you don't have to tram the vise, this is the way to do it. I, I, the farther out here you go, the more accurate it will be. I only had a 12 inch bar like I mentioned before, but it'd probably be better to make it whatever width you've got. And, and actually, uh, Bob Jones, he made his so that they fit in the ends here, I believe, and you can adjust it on that. But uh, the longer it is, the better, but you've got to have at least a one inch bar because you can't have the bar bending. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I guess you would call this a, a, vice, uh, a vice positioning jig, not a tramming jig, because you're not really tramming unless you use a dial indicator. But you saw how accurate that these, uh, these can be. And I had taken it off and put it back on when I did that uh, checking with a dial indicator. And uh, it's uh, what, you would, what you would call repeatable, I would guess. So I really want to give a great thanks to Bob Jones of uh, Billingham, Washington for sending me this. It's going to save me a lot of time in the future. And it's really, it's a real simple and, and uh, nice jig. And I actually made this to fit in my drawer. That's why yeah, fit in my drawer if I can open it. Uh, never mind. <laughs> so... Thank you for watching and uh, give us a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. Thank you.